Welcome back. Let's move on to another important process. It's called Perform Integrated Change Control. In this process, the project manager, along with the change control board, will be involved in reviewing, approving, or rejecting project change requests. Now, as you see on the screen, the change request template I've shown you may not be standard in some organizations. It may not be used across the board. Some firms don't use any formal change request. They just go ahead and verbally discuss and make changes, but not in the world of the PMI. In the world of the PMI, you should have a change request form, a documented way of capturing change requests. Okay, remember, everything in the world of the PMI is done to the extreme. It's done to the extreme of the spectrum that talks about structure, order, and process. So for your exam, I want you to think about change requests. Change requests need to be formally documented. They need to be reviewed and they are approved or rejected. Depending on the project, they could be um, rejected by the project manager if that's how the organization does business. It could be rejected by the sponsor if that's how the organization does business. But on the exam, the question will make it very clear what exactly the PMI is looking for. In most circumstances, I want you to think about change requests being reviewed by a body of people known as the Change Control Board. Take a look at the screen. This process is all about the Change Control Board approving or rejecting change requests. Outcomes of change reviews are documented in the change log. Again, there is a formal document where all change requests, all change request information is gleaned and captured, and that's called a change log. Okay, so let's take a look at the input. First of all, you've got a project management plan as an input because this tells you how to carry out the process of performing a greater change control. The next process is project document. Now, all manner of project documents could be looked at here. We could have a basis of estimates. We could have an RTM, a requirements traceability matrix. We could have all manner of documents. But I like to think about anything that is relevant for a review. If I'm carrying out a review on a change control board, I would like to know the health of the project. I would like to know the areas that could be impacted and the health of those areas currently on the project. The next input is work performance reports. Again, these reports tell you about the health of the project. The next one is change requests. What are we doing? We're reviewing change requests. So change requests must be an input to this process. The next input is enterprise environmental factors followed by organizational process assets, which we know. Okay, so we're not going to delve into those. Let's take a look at our tools and techniques. We've got the usual suspect, expert judgment. You've seen this quite a few times. The next tool and technique is change control tools. Change control tools refers to any tools that are used to capture the change request, review the change request, disseminate the change request, review the change request. A popular one I used a few years back is called Change Point. It's like a virtual change control board where a change request comes in, one person approves it, moves it to the next entity, and so on. The next tool and technique, data analysis. Now, when we talk about data analysis, we've got a couple in mind, alternatives analysis, looking for alternatives, and cost-benefit analysis. What is the benefit of this change? What is it going to cost? At times, you need to do an analysis on your change control board to fully assess if a change request should be approved or not. Next, we have decision making. Now, decision making, making decisions in the change control board, there are all sorts of ways this could be done. It could be majority wins the vote, you know, but the two broad categories voting, voting on making a change request or not, or multi-criteria decision analysis. And that looks at various criteria for effecting a change or for agreeing that a change should be made. So we call that multi-criteria decision analysis. 
And all these various criteria should be defined up front, and the Change Control Board, of course, is aware of it. The final tool and technique here is meetings. Meetings are the vehicle. Change Control Meetings, this is how we get change requests approved. Let's take a look at the outputs here. First one, approved change requests. As you are reviewing change requests, you're either approving them or rejecting them. Those that are approved, they're called approved change requests. We have the next output, project management plan updates. And this refers to any component of the project management plan that needs to be updated. Last but not least, we have project documents updates. But beware. Because in this output, we have a very important sub-output, the change log. It's not called out specifically, but it's inside project document. So when you think about project documents as an output from performing a great change control, the big one you want to think about is the change log, extremely important. Okay, For your exam, folks, oh my goodness, this is a huge, huge area. And for that reason, I want you to pay close attention to anywhere you see the word change. Understand what it is in this process. Change requests, know what they are, know the different dimensions they could come in. Change control tools, um, also understand decision making. You know, you vote or you could use multi criteria decision analysis. And also remember approved change requests as the output and project documents updates, which contains a change log. This is a loaded process. I would be surprised if you had anything less than 15 questions on change management. It's huge on the exam. Okay, well, let's move on to our next process.